Hello, I am Rich Collins, Corporate Program Manager with Medico Corporation. We are here today in beautiful San Antonio, Texas, where we are about to show you Medico's most recent facility. We reside here on Toyota's 2,000 acre campus. We are one of 22 selected OSS suppliers that were, will participate in the electric coating of the new Toyota Tundra. Medico is proud to have been selected as a supplier of choice by Toyota. Come on inside and let us show you our new state-of-the-art facility. Welcome to the great state of Texas. Over the next several minutes, we'll be taking you through the entire process from start to finish. Let's start at receiving. This is our shipping and receiving area. As you can see, this is where we receive the raw product. Once it's offloaded, we take it through the MITS inventory tracking system where every container is labeled and identified and then taken to the raw storage area. What you're seeing now is the creation of the MITS label. Again, this is where we verify the raw material incoming shipment against the packing slip and a master label is then created and then attached to the container. Two different sections within this line. This area here is our large part loading area. The raw material is put on this conveyance system where it's transferred down the line. Same we're on the opposite side for the finished product. Also, on this side of the system is where we do the small parts loading. The small parts loading is basically done in the same fashion where we bring a pallet of material up to the line. We actually introduce it onto a conveyance system. It is transferred down the system onto a parts bar where it is job specific to the rack type and the product type. We'll also show you in a moment how we create the the uh, load bar profile. I'm going to show you one of the MITS enhancements that we've uh, brought onto this facility. This is Fernando Ramos. He is our production uh, supervisor. He's going to walk through as I talk you through the, through the process. Basically what he's doing is removing the MITS identification card which tells us what product is in this container. He goes to the display board touch screen, which also indicates overhead here as well. We actually can create an image. This is through our MITS enhancement, where Fernando is actually identifying the load bar itself, the receiving tag number that the product was received in. And then they also then take it from there and identify exactly what area of the rack that the parts are loaded onto. Also within that same image, you will see a part description, product detail as to exactly what rack each individual part is loaded onto and the hanging method. So once this process is completed, we have a complete image of that load bar. Within the painting application, there are some unique situations such as this lower control arm. Actually apply a masking to not allow the material to get within that press fitting. Also, we have a lower brake pedal here that we also have requirements that are not allowed to have paint. So we keep it above the coating surfaces. This particular ecoat system is our flex system. It's called an indexing monorail. Basically what we have going on is the load of small parts on that side of the line. At this particular area is the load and unload of large parts. The parts are loaded on the system. The parts then pass through into our processing tanks. One of the unique features within this system is the knuckle that we have. This knuckle allows us to have a continuous chain without breaking it, where we have the lowering and raising of the bridge. Within this system, we have 15 stages. There are three cleaners, two rinses, a conditioner tank, a zinc phosphate, two DI rinses, e-coat bath, two post permeate, and a final DI rinse. Then it goes into the cure. After the parts come out of our processing tanks, comes through here, makes a turn. One unique feature that allows us within this system is to do a demask of the lower arms and then also make sure that we do not have any paint penetration within the area that is, has no paint requirements. It makes the turn it's then introduced on the right side into the uh, curing oven, makes one single pass, comes back through after it's cured, and exits on the left-hand side. 
The first unload station is a small parts unload, what we call small parts on the inside, where you can see our team member is actually pulling off the load bar itself, individually unloading each uh, particular part into his designated tote. From there, our next unload station then would be our cows. The cows have a unique situation as well, as when we take them off the line, we put them on a carousel. Within that carousel, our team member then removes it, puts it on a fixture, and we do a foaming application. The third unload station is on the other side. Again, that is a small parts unload. Same thing as the inside. The reason we separate these is to keep part integrity throughout. We will also show you our MIS enhancement, which will also identify the part, the quantity per container, and any quality alerts. Again, maintaining part integrity throughout the entire process. What you're seeing now is the uh, foaming cow station. Basically, the team members load off of the main conveyance system onto a carousel. An additional team member then removes the cow from the carousel and places it onto a fixture and then applies the foaming. On top here is the work instructions that details the foaming application. Again, this is another value-added service that Medicoat offers. Here we are at unload station number three, where Fernando is going to demonstrate again the other uh, MITS enhancement that we've identified in this uh, particular system, where he actually identifies the low bar that's in front of the working zone so the team leader understands exactly what product is on that particular low bar. They'll identify by what part number, the quantity per, and the location within that low bar. Also within that system, it also identifies any quality alerts. It will also be specific to the packaging requirements, quantity per container, if there's any other specific uh, special packaging instructions. After all the product is unloaded and put in its designated container, such as these totes here, we create a MITS tag label for this particular product and then it is transferred over to the finished goods area. In addition to our processing and line monitors that provide work instruction for our team members, we have processing monitors that are strategically placed throughout the facility. These monitors help in multiple ways. They identify our uptime capacity planning uh, line situations as well as maintaining our processing monitoring of both our processing system and our support equipment. In the event we would happen to have an alarm, it will quickly identify the location of the alarm so our team members can respond in a very quick fashion to rectify the situation. What you have just seen are just a few of our best practices that we have implemented in our current and all future facilities. That is what helps us maintain world-class capabilities and what separates us apart from our competitors. Thank you.